The experts want us to believe that a woman who labeled herself as queer and or a floater um, is a great wife or connection for a man who says he has both masculine and feminine energy, who has dated a man once and realized that he is not gay? How how in the world is that going to work? I have no idea. I think maybe on paper, maybe in the expert's mind, but in reality, it has left me scratching my brown head. So a woman who is still, in, still exploring her sexuality, then matched up with a man who has already done it and is now seeking um what he believes to be his wife welcome to cliff alert today we're going to be talking about lifetime networks reality-based tv series married at first sight season number 17 episode number one and we're going to discuss orion and lauren now um these are two um attractive people lauren is tall and and statuous and she's beautiful yeah she's kind of like got the um, model thing going on do you think yeah yeah, yeah. i mean she's kind of thin but yeah. she's got the model look yeah. yeah you know ryan looks to me he's what 20 he's 27 he's, he's 27 yeah, but uh -huh. he looks younger than 27 yeah he's an electrician yes a, she's a federal budget officer on paper they are both doing very well Yeah, and both seem to be uh, at least admittedly so uh, on both of their parts interested in being married to the right spouse, uh, uh, one who's adventurous, one who is obviously, uh, you know, they're sexually attracted to because they want to explore that end of it. Um, one who they can have fun with, travel with, and experience life with. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So. But both of them um, have had a gay relationship. Lauren labels herself as being queer and a floater and from what i understand being queer is you are sexually attracted to both men and women and you and you have relationships with both so does, uh, so does that mean necessarily that you vacillate between uh, yes between, you go okay uh, or a floater yeah, a floater right, is right. going from one place right to the other a drifter right a exactly right i got it mm -hmm. um Orion is a Native American. Native American. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he knows that he has both masculine and feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he explored um, the feminine side of him and he admitted that he went out with a man. Mm -hmm. But based on that one date, he recognized that he is not gay. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And there are men out there who have feminine energy, but they're not gay. Right. So we get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he explored that part of him and he recognized that, okay, a woman is what I want to align with. Right. Lauren is still going back and forth. Why are they, they matching her? Somebody who's sure. Yeah. And somebody it's who's not because sure. Because the commonality is that they, they, both were with um, a same-sex uh, person, partner? I don't know. Both Lauren and Orion wants to share um, each other's culture. Orion is proud to be a Native American, and yeah. he wants to share that history right. and everything it, it entails with her. And that's Navajo. fantastic. Navajo tribe, yep, absolutely. And, Love it. Uh, uh, of course, Lauren is African-American, mm -hmm. and she wants to explore that with him or show him that or lead him or guide him into that as well. All right, right now. Right there, I could see understand the connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. But regarding their sexuality, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Um, because of that Florida queer thing that Lauren has. Mm -hmm. I don't think she is settled. Um, she said that based on her experience, um, um, in theory, it, that that's the word she used. In theory, she wants to be married to a man. Does that make any sense? The woman said, in theory, like on paper, I should be married to a man. Well, I think uh, I think that has to do, to, to do with a couple of reasons. That I, I think that were, uh, you know, based on something that she said in, you know, giving her background. One, I think she uh, made a promise to her her mother that she would uh, she would be involved with 
you know, a, a man because but safety and security and all right, that good exactly, stuff. exactly. And unfortunately, her mother passed away, you know, yeah. in April prior to them right. shooting this. So, so she's still she in the wanted, grieving process. Absolutely, absolutely. However, is she doing this because this is what her mother wants? It no. seems like it is. Well, I think that's part of the reason why, but also the other part of the reason why is because she, as a woman, wants. I believe to feel the security and sense of uh, sense of uh, safety from that men can kind of offer to you know to the yeah. women as 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 their significant others. So I think that she wants to feel that. I, I don't. It's my just my opinion. I could be completely wrong about this, but I don't think she feels like a woman. Another woman could give that to her. I think this is they still exploring her sexuality and have no business being married mm -hmm. until she figures that out. Mm -hmm. well. uh, personally, because any, in theory, mm -hmm. I should be married to a man. Mm -hmm. You you still you don't talk like that if you if you, you, you if you're definitive you, about you where you are and what about you want where to you are and what you want. Is it is it like just it's just for the eight weeks? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't get it, but we, I don't know everything. Well, here's the thing. I mean, we would kind of even have more reason to question, like you have, you know, where, where she is with that when they went to the bachelorette party, right? Yeah, but before, before we get into that, she meets with her, her family, mm -hmm. her brother, Marcellus, Marcellus yeah, and, and she her, tells her, them was that... a friend or sister or a cousin, niece. Yeah, her family or whatever. Yeah, okay. And she tells them the news. She tells them she's looking forward to, it, forward to having mm -hmm. good sex, all mm -hmm. that stuff. And mm -hmm. her brother looks... He started scratching and rubbing his head. You know, the I mean, stuff like you do sometimes when you can't figure out what's happening. Don't compute. <laughs> Don't compute, y'all. So he was doing that. Mm -hmm. When Orion met with him, his mom, his sister, and friend, yes. he told them that he's excited. He's mm -hmm. looking forward to yes. what all this means. And, uh, you know, they were joyful for yeah, him. So when they go dress shopping... Orion chooses a tux that looked good. He looked good in that black and blue. It he was cut per to perfection. He was raisin life sharp. Yeah. And Lauren, on the other hand, she's tried on two dresses and um they called her aunt to get an opinion mm -hmm. about which dress she yeah, should choose. Because you know, Auntie ain't going ain't gonna to pull any punches. With right. She, you know. And she started crying because she was feeling the loss and grief of her mother not being there to experience the excitement of choosing a dress right. with her. Right. But she was able to get over that. And we see them at the um, bachelor and the bachelorette party. Now... <laughs> Orion was turned up. Brannon mentioned that they gave Orion a couple of drinks and he started yeah, he talking a some back. ish. He was talking smack. He and was. one of the ish that he was talking about is he was saying because he had a lot of girth that, you know, he had problems in the past um, um, getting with some women because it may have been too much. Too much girth. Are y'all buying it? It's unusual for a man to say he got a lot of He's well endowed. stuff. He's well endowed. You know, you expect that from a comedian, you know, like, you know. Bernie Mac but, but for a brother in the company of other men to talk about how much girth he has seemed a little immature to me. Well, he is three years younger than, than uh, his uh, bride-to-be. Well, regardless of that, it just seemed a little immature and low-key boastful. I don't think the brother understands that the girth situation may work, but when a woman got to end up at the gynecologist, that's a different story altogether. So, Or he could just be selling wolf tickets, like my uncle used to say. Yeah, yeah, that too. So we see Lauren, she's turned up, she's getting her party on. Mm -hmm. And um, we see an interaction between um, Emily, who was on the wall, who was tore up yeah, on the wall. She, but as I she wasn't saying she wasn't on her feet, was she? She was on her hands. She was on her hands trying to get up on the wall, and we see Lauren come across and start, start, and I'm like, what is her? 
what and then she goes on the after party and said and she even commented that she will be monogamous it was just surprised to see her just you know doing that on tapping that ass You think, literally, literally. You think it's funny. But I was like, what the hell? Well, what may I think what may have caught you off guard is that her expression, she seemed to be enjoying it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and so and so you see when brothers see that kind of stuff, or you know, they like all for it. But but when you're when you're a woman, uh, you know, it might be it might be a little different. I know I can't speak for him, but I'm just saying I can speak for the brothers uh, to a certain degree, but I can't speak for the women. But this is a woman who signed up to be with married a man. to a man. So I understand. she does, doesn't have to wear it all, even when when she lick it up to keep her hands to herself. Apparently not. Lauren uh, and Emily went on the after party with Keisha. And they talked about Emily being drunk. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lauren seemed like she was toe up from the floor, just like Emily was, and was co-signing everything she was saying. It's too early to tell. I feel like this doesn't make sense. Listen, listen. Let me, let me, uh, let me just add my two cents, okay? Because at the bachelor party, uh, yeah, they were both, they were both turned up. Uh, but I tell you what, um, Orion uh, didn't mind having. His face in some places where it shouldn't have been, right? And, Shippers, and uh, like throwing the bits and pieces right, and, and the what what and, on them. And and it's like oh my and at god! The, at, at the bachelorette party, Lauren was getting it in too. Um, she had a, a stripper take shots of, between her cleavage and uh, and all of that. Oh, okay. They were they were all turned up. Yeah, and then didn't Lauren have a conversation with? I think it was Emily brought up. Um, they, have you ever had or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know how they have these random conversations. And didn't she mention something about inches being too much? So what's she going to do when she hook up with Orion, who claimed that the girth is... Um, on Substantial, top? significant. What, what's going to happen? I have too much information on my head, so I just got to leave this alone to Man. try to keep it peachy. I just uh, well here's here's my here's my thing on on this. I think it was foolish for for him even if he was toe up to open up that that uh, that conversation with uh, with anybody in a public setting because now it it sets up you know it sets up uh, an occasion where uh, if he appears on the, on the after party and Keisha decides to go to that portion of the tape and at, at some point throughout the course of this this uh, this season there she's going to go back to that part of the tape if I if I'm you know, if I'm even halfway accurate and, you know, since it was introduced to the public, even though she didn't ask him specifically, I think she might feel like she has the green light to do so. Well, however it works out with these two, more will be revealed. We thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, what is your final word? If I'm not mistaken, Pastor Cal described them as a perfect match. Y'all believe that?